Welcome to today's video and today we are going to be doing a review of the awesome Super Ride S1000, the one wheel electric unicycle, as you see right here behind me. And make sure that you stay to the end of this video for some safety tips and tricks to prevent accidents like this. And this thing has quite the steep learning curve. Okay, let's check out some epic B-roll and then we'll get into the review. Okay, so before we get started, just a real quick note that I am shooting today's video on the DJI Osmo Pocket, not the Pocket 2. If you want to see a really good video on some of the shortcomings of the Pocket 2, check out the how-to guy. His link is in the description down below. Okay, so here it is, the Super Ride S1000, self-balancing, one wheel, super fat tire in the back. It's like the back tire of a lawnmower electric unicycle thingy and you might ask steve why would somebody of your age you're almost 47 why would you buy such a thing because i finally done the, the reasoning and figured out that in order to make it on youtube you have to have some kind of an electric board or bike and i haven't seen any famous youtubers cruising around on one of these yet so i figured i would take advantage of that niche but anyway with that being said, as you can tell, you have nice aluminum pedals that do flip up and flip down. And in case you're wondering, this thing is right now balancing itself. I do have it turned on. No props holding it up. You got the super fat plastic fender with the nice shiny super ride red sticker on the back. Under the seat, is the battery and the control module. That's the battery and the brains all together. Then you got these super cool scuffed up aluminum stances off the back, which look like spikes to kill somebody. But in reality, that's your kickstand. The bag is not included. If you want that bag, $19 at Walmart. Really handy for sticking your phone in when you're cruising around. And as you can also see in the back is you have a tail light with three small red LEDs and you also have a you also have a headlight on the front which is super bright as well so if you work your way up the handlebar and of course you can see the frame the frame is all steel but as you come up you have two grips these are not throttles they're just grips this is your headlights off and on the mighty horn Nobody can hear it. Then you have an all digital gauge cluster that has kilometers travel, temperature of the motor, and also your battery level indicator and your speed in kilometers. And then this right here is a, I'm gonna call it an oh shit handle because if you get in trouble and you can't stop, you squeeze this and it slings the whole bike back. So that's just a quick uh, walk around of what you get. And don't forget the uh, super padded seat here. That's really more made for kind of a child, I think. It's all right, but if you do a lot of riding, you're gonna know it. But anyway, well, that being said, that's enough of the, uh, the walk around. Let's get into some specs and features. Okay, so to start, the Super Ride has a hub motor on the inside. It's a thousand watt motor, which is supposed to be capable of up to 20 miles an hour. The battery is removable, 60 volts, 5.8 AH battery. The load capacity is 280 pounds. And uh, you better believe that weight affects distance on this thing. And it is boasting a 45 minute charge time, which you'll see the charge time test coming up and says it can travel 15 miles. 
while we also do a range test and I will be displaying that to you as well. Okay, so I did a range test on this Super Ride S1000 and I fully charged it, took it straight off the charger and just rode and rode and rode. I rode for an hour and 10 minutes and I'm gonna put a little display up on the screen right now for you to see the range results. As you can tell, I rode for about an hour and 10 minutes. The top speed was maybe 17 miles an hour. I'm not looking at the chart right now, so don't hold me to that, but I'll put an arrow to it. And as you can see, the distance traveled was seven miles. Now I weigh 220 pounds and I'm thinking that, you know, if I was smaller in stature, you know, which is common in the country that it was made and weighed probably 150 pounds, I would probably get a lot more distance out of it. But I can tell you this from after riding for seven miles and an hour and 10 minutes, you've had enough anyway. Okay, so let's talk about the charge time. On the website, it says the charge time is 45 minutes to a full charge. When I timed it, it was a little, a little bit longer than 45 minutes, and it ended up being three and a half hours to get back to a full charge. So despite the boasted 45 minute charge time, that's a complete fallacy. Okay, so as you can see, it is freestanding, and the pedals on the side do fold up for whenever you're getting on the bike. Now, the way that you actually ride this is, it all has to do with the lean, as they say, the motion of the ocean. So if you wanna go forward, you lean forward. If you wanna go backwards, you lean backwards. If you wanna turn, it took me a while to figure this one out because you're not gonna do any high speed turns on this. So you do have to lean back and slow down. And then what I do is I shift back on the seat after I've slowed down. And when I start to speed up again, then you lean to whichever side you wanna turn and that will get you to turning. If you're going fast and you try to lean, you're gonna go into what I call a death wobble. You start just wobbling around and now you're throwing your feet and sliding down the road at 15 miles an hour trying to stop yourself from killing yourself. So you must really slow down for turns, lean back, get her slowed down, and then I lean on the back corners of the seats and shift my weight to make the turns. Pretty cut and dry, it's extremely stable and the forward and back. You have to really, really push it hard in order to, uh, you know, tap out the motor and get it to actually fall forward. But as far as side to side, that's where the learning curve comes in. You're really gonna work out your uh, core, your keg in my case, to uh, learn how to get this side to side motion. Okay, so let's talk about a couple safety tips on this bike. As you can see, you have this horizontal bar right here. When you first get yours, you're going to want to recalibrate it. Just follow the directions on how to recalibrate, or if need be, I can put a video up on how to do it. But you want this to have a tendency to lean back more. You want this bar just slightly up, because when you're sitting in the neutral position, you want it to have a tendency to want to slightly go backwards or break. That way it takes more effort to go forward. That is for the fact that when you're riding, it'll be much easier just to lean back and brake and it takes more effort to go forward because when mine first came, it was calibrated more towards the front and I would have to sit all the way back here on these metal pegs to get it to slow down. You don't wanna have difficulty stopping on this, I promise. Tip number two is, you can see on the side here, these little wings, these are the pedals for your feet. These are made out of aluminum. Where you have to be careful and how you prevent gouges in your leg, like I have three in the back of my left leg, is when you're first riding, keep these flipped up. And I would suggest taping them up or tying them up. That way you can keep your feet down slightly off the ground until you get an idea of what you're doing. Because what would happen to me is it would start going crazy, the pedal would flip down, I couldn't stop, it would go forward and bam, just like that. It hits the back of your legs and you end up missing a chunk. Tape these up, secure them up while you're learning and you have to keep your feet down while you're riding. Safety tip number three, get a pool noodle, piece of rubber, something, wrap it around the fronts of these pedals because it's just inevitable that you're gonna hit yourself with it and the more padding, the better. Okay, so the only test left to do is a ride test. So, uh, might as well get started on that. I gotta deliver a package that I'm sending off to the local UPS. So what we're gonna do is strap it the box to the front and we're gonna go to UPS and we'll talk about how it rides.
Okay, so it's a very windy day. I'm hoping the road wireless go is uh, pulling us through as far as uh, blocking this wind noise, along with all the other uh, power equipment running around me. But anyway, I would recommend a helmet for this, even though it's not required in the US like it is in some other countries. Not required, but I would suggest it for this thing. That beeping you hear, every time you go over 22 kilometers an hour, it starts beeping at you. And then you can continue to speed up to the max speed. And then once you hit max speed, it actually will start to pull you back to keep you from falling forward on your face. So it does have that safety feature in to keep you from uh, face planting it. But it's annoying because just at a cruising speed, you gotta listen to the beep beep noise and there's no way to get rid of that as far as I know. And the only suspension on this bike is the tire. So thank goodness it's a thick, uh, wide tire. So it does provide a little cushion other than you know what's provided by the tiny little seat. But uh, but other than that, it's quite bouncy. And I would suggest too that, let me slow down a little bit. I would also suggest that if you first start riding this, you want the flattest, smoothest surface because even the slightest angle like a pitch in the road can cause you to start wobbling until you get used to it. And just something as simple as swapping from one lane to the other, like you can see the ridge in the center of the road, it can actually just throw you off balance and cause you to start wobbling and shaking. You want to avoid bumps, potholes, manhole covers, any kind of a bump whatsoever because it can spell disaster. But once you ride it for a little while, and this is like my fourth or fifth charge, I can stand up on it, I can hit bumps, I can jump on curbs, I can do all kinds of stuff now that, because I've learned how to shift my weight to maintain control. And that's what you have to do is, you actually have to learn how to slide your butt back and shift your weight to the corners to steer one way or the other. And you have to kind of learn to loosen up a little bit and just kind of uh, go with the flow somewhat. You gotta maintain control, but you can't stay too rigid. If you stay too rigid, it's gonna make for a very long ride and a very short fall. So that's all I've got to really say about the ride. Once you get used to it, it is relaxing, it is fun. You can have a good time with it. And it's nice for buzzing around the neighborhood. Like I just use it to run up to UPS and drop off packages and run up to the gas station to get a beer or whatever. And mainly for letting the kids ride around the neighborhood on their bikes and I just follow them so I don't have to walk or pedal. Okay, so this is gonna conclude the video and the review of this Super Ride S1000. Just leave a comment down below what you thought of it and drop a comment down below if you wanna see what modifications I have in mind and how I'm gonna to try to extend the range and a couple changes I'm gonna make. I'm Steve WB and I'm out.